Hey guys, Indie Mayhem Show, we have old school Burt LeGrand taking over for, well, most of the show. We'll explain later, talking about wrestling's history in the Pittsburgh area and so much more. Stay tuned. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, strong, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Peanut for the taste of the pie. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 89. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter uh, here from the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, where you talk about independent professional wrestling from a couple of guys and our guests for this week that work in somewhat in the uh, in the independent professional wrestling realm. Uh, myself with some video production with some local groups, including the RWA and the IWC in the Pittsburgh area. And also with me uh, from San Antonio, he represents Inspire Pro Wrestling out of Austin, Texas. He is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. He is Eamon Payton at Eamon 2, please. Hello, Sogatron. Uh, yeah, I'm ready to talk some indie wrestling as always, as we are to do here on the Indie Mayhem Show. That's right, and I'm maybe a little delayed as well. I think our pipe to uh, San Antonio might be, a little, might be a little bit clogged there, uh, but we'll, we'll we'll roll with it. Uh, so, uh, anyways, this is the Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, we uh, you can check us out at wrestlingmayhemshow dot com, and uh, you can subscribe to us on Twitter, on uh, on Facebook, on on the um, Instagrams. Yes, actually, we are on Instagram. I need to do more with that, um, and and so much more. Uh, and you can also drop us a line. Let us know what you think about our guests, so guests that we should be having. We got a couple recommendations that we've been uh, working on in the background. Round. And you can check, you can please drop us a line to 412 206 WMS0 or good times at wrestling mayhem show.com. Big thanks to uh, Basic Sickness at basic sickness.com. Free music and uh, helps us with our intro to this and the wrestling mayhem show. If you dig that, please go check them out. And if you dig what we're doing, we actually have a Patreon for the main wrestling mayhem show. You can support us monetarily there, become our boss, get a state of the show, WMS gold, and so much more. Patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. And join us here live at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. The fun begins at 9 p.m. Eastern time with the Wrestling Mayhem Show every week. And uh, us about 11 o'clock uh, Eastern time as well. Or a little bit later as I look up at the clock. We <laughs> ran late tonight. Holy crap. Uh, but anyways, let's get into it. We have a guest in the studio this week. He's from here in the Pittsburgh area. He is old school Bert. No, that's not right. Bert oh, LeGrand. Wow. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> My God, Amen has disappeared on us. Uh, but Bert LeGrant joins us in studio. He is, uh, of course, uh, announcer for the Renegade Wrestling Alliance, and uh, of course, work with Vicious Outcast Wrestling and then some other stuff around the area. We'll yep. get into all that. How you doing tonight, Bert? Doing all right, Sorgan. Thank you very much for inviting me and inviting me into the. Uh in the dungeon here, the official home of Sorgatron Media, and uh, really excited to be here. Looking forward to this, man. Some call it a dungeon. Some call it a technological citadel. It really it's is. It's been really weird as, as people come in here and, and see what actually happens and see how it really looks, mm-hmm. and uh, and, it's, then, and it's 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 curious. You get a feel for how the Sorgatron sausage is made, I'll tell you that right now. That's also something I've heard. <laughs> But uh, anyways, uh, so I want to get into it. First of all, we'll get to know you on the show. Uh, what is the earliest kind of memory about really getting into professional wrestling? For me? Yeah. Okay. Um, 30 years ago, ABC Channel 4 here in town wow. had a replay of WrestleMania 1. They did it on a Saturday morning, or maybe it was like Saturday around noon. Really? And I watched it at my parents' house. I was nine years old. And the very first match I've seen, I ever saw, was the body slam match between Andre the Giant and Big John Studd on that replay. And I think from then, from there, I was hooked. Because I never, I, growing up, I could never get into Star Wars. I could never get into the, the Superman, the Batman, the action figures, the comic books. But here were some real life action figures in my mind, real life guys, real people, doing something in the ring, good versus evil, and that got me. From, from that point on, I, 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 was a, I was a fan pretty much from the word go at that point. Never missed a show. Stayed up early, to, stayed up late to watch Saturday Night's main event, you know, back when I was filling up for Saturday Night Live on the reg. But it, uh, from that point on, I was absolutely hooked by it. So, so I, I did a quick Google tr- search on that because yep. I, I feel like maybe I, I don't know if you told me the story or I've heard before about how it was on local TV. It seems somewhat familiar. So I pulled up the Wikipedia page. Yep. 
And apparently, uh, you, in two weeks after WrestleMania one, they showed it in its entirety on TA here local. Yep. yep. Uh, because they had the closed circuit showing at the Civic Arena. And the, you know, the igloo is not right. there anymore. Right. Uh, and to appease the angry fans who who pelted the screen with garbage, yep. WrestleMania was broadcast in its entirety two weeks later. That's absolutely right. And, I, and I, of course, I know anything about that. I just saw, you know, here was this wrestling show on on TV, and here were these guys doing this thing. I didn't know the backstory. Little did now you I do, know, but, yes. Little did you know, it was the most important wrestling show probably in ever. That's right. That's absolutely right. Wow. For a number of reasons. That's 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 amazing. Uh, and also, the Wikipedia uh, mentions that this uh, mishap was mistakenly attributed to WrestleMania two, right? In true story of WrestleMania DVD and Blu-ray, which you can see on the WWE Network now, of course. Because it makes it makes a better story to have those uh, kind of uh, mistakes. <laughs> yes, it, exactly. it, it, it works better for the narrative in that DVD. I have that DVD as well, and uh, it, worked, mm-hmm. it, worked, it worked better for the narrative at that point because I think they, uh, I think even when they showed the uh, clip of it. The, the newspaper clip of what happened. Mm-hmm. I think the actual date on the clip on the DVD was 1985, mm-hmm. and and it, it it didn't seem to make any sense at the time when I watched it. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's, that's a great backstory there. Wow. So you are a long time uh, Pittsburgh wrestling fan yes. for one thing. Yes, uh, absolutely. So so you know you do commentary, you do announcing. Um, how did you get, get into the local? pro wrestling side the of local things. scene i i never actually knew anything about the local scene uh mm-hmm. for a long time and I, and, and I'm, I'm such i feel so bad about that because i'm, I'm involved now as heavily as i am mm-hmm. and before like before i got started in 2001 i barely knew anything i knew there was i think it was steel city wrestling had a show on one of the local you know dated term but uhf channels um at the time. So I, I saw a couple of the veterans. Um, I, I can't name anybody right now. It was, it, it was that far on my mind. But in terms of how I got involved, uh, I was working as a producer uh, on 1360 AM. It was WPTT at the time uh, for uh, Doug Hearth, the Doug Hearth radio show. Long time talk radio veteran since passed away and was a good friend of mine. And uh, Doug and I were talking about wrestling one day on the show. And uh, he knew I was a fan. So we talked about whatever angle was going on on Raw, and Doug watched from time to time, and he's he had a bunch of the wrestlers on his show back in the day, Flair, Dusty Rose, and Piper. But we talked about it, and uh, I forget what the what my angle was, but just talking about being a fan, and I got a call offline from a regular listener to the show by the name of, uh, he called himself Andrew and Latrobe, and turns out it was uh, Drew Lazario, hotshot Drew Lazario, manager of champion, champion of managers. And he said, hey, I heard you talk about wrestling on the show. I'm with this organization called uh, FNW, Far North Wrestling. We do shows around the area. i uh, love to have you come down to the show. And it was a uh, show that was in the King's Court on uh, Forbes Avenue in Oakland, right on the right Wow, on the, uh, on the like pit. right, right pretty in the heart much of downtown. Pit, right in the heart of Pitt. And, uh, you know, never been to a show before. I mean, I was, I've been to shows as a fan. Never been backstage or anything close to it. Never got, never got involved behind the Magic Curtain before. And uh, did it and was instantly hooked. Just hung out backstage, got to meet. I think Balls Mahoney was the name they brought did, in for the show. I, I want to, okay, first I was looking at a picture for Drew Lazario. Yeah. And do I see Jesse the Mark in this picture? You probably do. Yes, I, you do. That would be him. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, JTM. Yeah. Just JTM and uh, Hotshot Drew Lazario. That's the one. The one and only JTM, the uh, the uh, video or the uh, the artist to the to the stars here in Pittsburgh. That's right. For, in professional wrestling, by Absolutely. the way. Good guy. Um, so Good yeah, guy. that's awesome. I have been trying to get him on the show for a while. Yeah, but just... I've uh, I've said that he's been around for so long. Mm-hmm. I said that uh, whenever he's done with wrestling and and gets his awesome graphics job, otherwise, uh, I'm going to get a shoot interview with him because I think he's has I think he has some stories. Oh, he him. definitely has some so. stories. He's a good guy. <laughs> And after I after I did the uh, the first show, just hanging out, uh, they had me. I think I was running sound for the next show, and the third show that I was involved with, uh, they needed a ring announcer, mm-hmm. and I had never done ring announcing before. At any, I mean, uh, it was my third show I ever did, so I I barely had any idea what to do. I was running around the backstage with a chick with my head cut off, and I was awful at it. I was you know. Green, green as goose droppings, as they say, and um, it was it showed. I, I announced a show like I had never announced a show before in my life, 
And the one thing that people, as soon as I got out there, the one thing people were chanting is, we want Hank, we want Hank. Where's Hank? Because I guess Hank was the regular ring announcer. And I looked over at the ref at the time, and again, green, who's Hank? <laughs> Hank Hudson, the iconic uh, ring announcer here in Western Pennsylvania since mm-hmm. now, since then a good friend. I was that I was that green that I didn't know anything about it. So realize not realizing the shoes of, of who I was fill you know the, the shoes I was filling at the time, <laughs> I, I since uh, made it a point to uh, smarten up the bu- to the business and, and hit myself real quick. Yeah, you know, eyes ear eyes open, ears open, mouth shut, as they say. And uh, from then, I was basically a sponge, we're trying to soak up as much as I can of just the 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 scene, the the backstage scene, how everything worked, how everything was put together, how a, how a show is booked. How you work with names? What happens with the names? How how do you bring in a honky talk man? Or how do you bring in a Larry mm-hmm. Zabisco? How that happens? And, and 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 in the time since then, I've I've I still continue to learn to this very day uh, on shows and just how things work and how I can be an asset backstage to shows. And I think it's uh it, it's been a, a hell of an experience. Absolutely. You're so unassuming <laughs> at these shows because I've I, like I've like learned little tidbits here and there right. talking with you at RWA and, and I geez I, you've been in RWA with us four years so for four years, four years yeah. so about as long as I've been around helping uh, with a video and mm-hmm. in any aspect um, and I'm just like uh, you know I have no idea going into this yeah. um, but uh, interesting actually I was passing a show and I think I had passed a, I think where I was pulling up uh, Super Indie two. Yes, and, and I haven't listened to a lot of the old shows or anything like that. Uh, but I was, in particular, I pulled it up because I, it happened to pull up for whatever reason. I was looking at it; and it's in White Oak, where we just had a show with IWC this past weekend. I was yep. kind of like, "Oh, that lighting's really interesting in there." I pop up the Chachi, and he's like, "That's Bert." Yes, it is, and, and, like, and that was I was the uh, I was the go between between Jeff Gorman and uh, Joe Dombrowski in terms of commentary. Jeff mm-hmm. had done it for a while at IWC, mm-hmm. and I, I I think it was maybe to have he took a break for something. It was either I think it was maybe to have to deal with his his child or whatever, but uh, he took a break. Uh, Norm Connors was in a pinch, and he he looked me up backstage at a different Fed, mm-hmm. and said, "Hey, uh, can you do commentary on the show?" And uh, you know, me never having done commentary before uh, for a full show, I did like a match here and there, but never did a full show before. But I was willing to try new things. Sure, no problem. I'll do commentary. And uh, they brought in uh, Eric Ecstasy to be my color man. Oh, jeez. Yeah. And uh, it worked really well. I think we had a lot of fun with that. Uh, it was a great tournament. I think Colt uh, Cabana ended up winning the whole thing. I mean, that was the Colt Cabana year. That was year, the Colt yeah. Cabana year. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, my, my, my big story from that, which was another learning experience, you learn every show you do, was that none other than Raven uh, chewed me out for uh, shaking hands wrong. Oh, wow. Apparently, I, I, I did not know the code in, 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 my, in my shaking hands like a regular person. <laughs> Learn, learn the hard way that I guess that's not how you're supposed to do things in Raven's world. So, Raven's um, world. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, from that point on, you know, you, you learn things about people. Mm-hmm. And uh, other than that, Raven was great to work with, but uh, it was a lot of fun. And, and the funny part was, I had tried really, really, really hard to keep the Burt life uh, away from my regular life, where I worked full time at the radio station. I really tried to uh, bifurcate the two, and I was working my shift at the radio station, and one of the salespeople had uh, walked up to me and said, "Yeah, I, I was I was watching wrestling on Friday night, and I could have sworn I heard your voice." And it was sort of like the uh, it was sort of the uh, you know the outing, as it were. I'm like, "Yeah, that's me." So I had to. Uh, that was sort of like the uh, um, you know the the man behind the curtain reveals himself moment. Mm-hmm. And uh, which is, you know, it, you're unassuming, you have fun with it. I, I've always said to anybody who will listen that wrestling is by far and away the stupidest thing I do, <laughs> without a doubt. But it's also the most fun. Right. It, it's the most fun, and, and you've seen it at the shows you work with next to me. I, mm-hmm. Find me one person in the building where it's more fun than I do doing a show <laughs> and, and just living the moment, loving the moment, having fun with everybody. Uh, I never thought in a million years I could get people to boo. The administrative task of reading the rules beforehand, <laughs> and they boo the hell out of it, uh-huh. and, and I love every second of it because it's 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 you know, the so crowd I, getting into it. It's I, the crowd having fun with it, and, and I've I have noticed, fun. and I've noticed, um, 
you draw it out even more. You know, I mean, of you, know, you know, the general rules of, by the way, you know, don't throw anything, don't right. interact with the wrestlers, don't touch the wrestlers. It please should take don't 15 film. seconds. Yeah. <laughs> I turned like it into a three minute it thing. Like a, it's like, yeah, exactly. It turns into like a minute, you know. Um, yeah, at some point, I don't know if they're booing you or my company because you say without the written permission oh, right. yeah. of RWA and Sorgatron, of Media. and Sorgatron Media. Yeah, yeah. I, I, like, I, there's, I think they're turning more in my favor at this point. I think so. A little bit. Like, I'm hearing some cheers I, a little I, I bit. Do, I, I keep telling Dr. Feelbad all the time that I'm threatening to uh, turn the rules babyface on him just to see what he does. <laughs> But it's also, I think it's also my uh, my cathartic moment because I've not worked heel in Western Pennsylvania since 2005. So if that's what it takes for people to boo me, then so be it. <laughs> so what did you do heel wise then? I, I was a uh, manager. Usually, what I would do, okay, um, for the most part, when I worked at FNW, once I you know, graduated, I use air quotes, past ring announcing, I um, uh, was well, I'd be a manager. I'd just be a, a personality, kind of like a, a nuisance kind of guy. Usually, um, whoever the promoter would be, if it would be, uh, if it were Drew, if it were uh, Dan Polinsky, who's of course the father of uh, Corey Graves, and um, and uh, as well as his brother Sam Elias, um, usually, if they had just a, a guy that was out there is looking to get heat somewhere, mm-hmm. just a, a just a new guy, just hey, you know, go out with this guy, get him some heat. That's what I'd do. Mm-hmm. You know, just be there and just be a bad guy and just you know work the crowd and have fun with that too. And, um, you know, just, it, it, I wouldn't, I was not an attraction. I wasn't a, any main you know guy. I wasn't involved in any main storylines. No, I was just a guy to throw out there. Just, Hey, you know, help, help, get, this, that, help get this guy. That over classic indie deal. wrestling. Like when it looks like they just threw this guy out there, that's like his buddy or something that's right. off the street. You're that guy that was the buddy off the street, random person. I'm like, why is this guy even out here? That's right. And that's, that's the reason. That's absolutely right. And I, and, and, you know, you learn about yourself the whole time. And what I've learned is. You know, I'm sitting down right now. I'm also six foot three, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and a lot of independent wrestlers are not six foot three. Mm -hmm. So what I what I would find is that I'm I'm half a head taller than a lot of people I'd be managing. That was a problem for me because I was ringside camera for the longest time, sure, sure, and that's noticeable. And actually, there was a bit where they didn't want me at ringside, right? And and, And and that was I I totally understand that. I I mm -hmm. get that. I'm too. It's it's. It's you know the innocent crime of being too tall for what you do. I, I did the uh, you know, I do the same thing with ring announcing. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I tell people, especially some of the shorter wrestlers, and they can't help their height. I can't help mine. But you know, you, you tell them, don't be, don't get too near me, because it would look really bad. Mm-hmm. And, and I try to you know I try to cut my legs out so I can I I can lower myself an inch or two or three, to try to you know mitigate it on my end. But that's what you do. But um, yeah, so I would do yeah, that, and yeah. uh, I often uh, I attribute uh, I attribute my managing to uh, getting hit in the head with the street sign. Never thought I'd get in the head with the, hit in the head with the street sign in my life, but uh, I did because I was a manager. It was a fun day. <laughs> it's a fun day at the office, right? It was office, a fun right? day at the <laughs> office, man. I got hit. T Ranch hit me with a, street, a, a speed limit twenty five stop sign, right or a street sign, right in the head, and uh, I took it. I took it the right way, and uh, it stung and it hurt for a couple of days, but it was fun. <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd do it again. I'd do it again right now if you got one. But um, <laughs> well, actually, we do have a cling yeah, on right road sign. The, we got the a tow away sign right, over here. Right there, yeah. Uh, so maybe we'll do a special right spot, there. a special thing for gold afterwards, perhaps. Yeah, maybe. Sure. We'll see how this goes. We'll so, do this dark match. Right? Yeah, off, dark match. Off camera because Pod, that, that makes pod, sense. Podcast dark match. Right. Exactly. Um, wow. Um, so, so, and again, you're, so you, um, oh, you say you work, we would talk a little bit off air. You do work in the radio industry, yep. if it's okay to mention there. Yes. Um, so obviously you're in uh, kind of an industry that's, uh, I guess you can call it the entertainment informational, oh, yeah. um, you know, dealing with uh, communications in general. Um, how does that translate? And did that really kind of help you in the long run, uh, uh getting into wrestling and, and, um, but I, it, with the story with Drew, it got my foot in the door. But right, I think right. I, I think also the two work the two work hand in hand because you know yes when I went to college I went to Syracuse University for my uh, for my degree in broadcast journalism and you know the fundamentals were there in terms of learning how to present myself how to speak public speaking but wrestling helped that uh, the the wrestling. Doing the the ring announcing, doing promos, doing other things helped that because I was able to 
you know, use what my voice and use my message, whatever the message would be, to get somebody over, to, you know, get myself over, uh, to manipulate a crowd a certain way. And I think that uh, that helped my public speaking immensely in terms of my confidence, my mm-hmm. ability to, you know, get, you know, be handed a microphone in front of 250, 300 people and without any re- real idea what to say and then make something work. And I think that was an asset. And that also translated to radio too, because I think it helps build the confidence. Being the Bert LeGrand character gave me something to, uh, you know, it gives me something to hang my hat on even when I do radio. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think since then it's been a, it's been a nice marriage. Good, good, good. You have any advice for anybody who wants to break in uh, kind of, I don't know, on these kind of side jobs like this? Um, you know, again, you know, we're a collection of people definitely on this show. People are like, yeah, we're not going to be pro wrestlers. Right. No, but yeah. we're into it. We want to be a part of it or found right. ourselves as a part of it. Um, I mean, we, what do you have advice for somebody that wants to get involved in, in kind of that method? Just be a pest. Uh, have, <laughs> no, be a pest Have and, and have no ego. And, and, oh, just, yeah. and, and look to get into it. And just, you know, you, you like something, uh, you know, the promoters, by and large, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to single anybody out, but the promoters, by and large, are people who are looking for free help. They're looking for help. Uh, yes. Yeah, they're looking for, for anybody. I mean, it's it's very much... Sometimes in- the videographers, too, are right. looking for free help. No, right. To be no, exactly. Because what, what you do, what what what, what Derek does in, in, in RWA, yeah. what Nino does in, in Bill do in VOW, they are entrepreneurs it's a very entrepreneurial grassroots spirit and right, what, it, right. what it is is you know that what do you need you need you need labor you don't have much resource you don't have many resources you don't no, have much, no, in, no. much in the bank we're definitely nobody's in here for the money no uh, of course not of course not <laughs> if, if you get gas money you know if you get if you get enough money for gas and, and, and your, your your gas there and back and a, and a quick meal of cheats or whatever you know you're good to go yeah you know, it was a yeah. fun day you know i'm not you know nobody gets rich in independent wrestling no, and that's you know I think that's it's definitely a love of the game, and if you have that, you can convey that to a promoter and say, hey, I I just want to be a, I want to be more than a fan. I want to be a part of this, you know, and and have no ego. Mm-hmm. If it's okay, here's some flyers. Go you know pay for the neighborhood. If it's um, you know here's here's some tickets. Do what you can. Go to this pizza shop, whatever, and sell some tickets. If mm-hmm. it's if it's hey you know we need an extra hand setting up the ring or tearing down the ring. If it's something, just be involved somehow because people will see it. And I think it's also, you know, uh, that expectation of, you know, again, being uh, a part of the side. I think I think their labor, your help, maybe announcers, whatever the case may be, uh, maybe aren't don't have the illusions of grandeur that, oh, this is completely going to get me to WWE like maybe a pro wrestler does. Right. Right. Oh, no. Uh, we're working on a different reason than yeah. the guys in the ring typically. Right. I mean, we're uh, people, you know, by and large, people like us are established in our normal daily lives you know i'd have if, if wwe called me tomorrow mm-hmm. you know there'd be some major uprooting i'm it's not my trajectory at the moment no you know i work one or two shows a month and i'm happy with that it, it fits my life you know bert legrand is literally and i, I timed this out it's literally literally one percent of who i am in terms of my time spent being bert legrand hmm you know, and that's and that's that's the funny part. That's that one percent that gets me here on the Wrestling Mayhem show. It's in the Mayhem <laughs> show. It's the one percent that gets me in RWA. It's the one percent that gets me in. It's one percent that gave me that Twitter page. You yeah, know, it, yeah, it, yeah. It's so funny to think about that. So, know. so, so, okay. So, so you're 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 on Twitter now, and now yes. you're one percent. One Bert Legrand. Twitter's yes. kind of a on all the, the time. One percenter. Kind of yeah, the one percenter <laughs> one. That's your my that's new, your gimmick, gimmick. Yeah, there you go. One percenter. Lurk. You introduce yourself as that maybe that's at right. the next. Uh... Oh yeah, that'd be, yeah, that'd be good. There's the heel um, heat I need. There you go. There you go. Also, I, I thank you for reading my note the last show. <laughs> yes, yes. Hey, you give me a note, I read it. I'm, I'm, I'm Ron Burgundy, man. I read what's on the prompt. There you, you go. Oh, well, randomly, the last show. Well, the poor guy is the last few RWA shows. There's been no real ring announcers, so it's been him right. doing. I always ring announcers in ring announcing yeah. and then the ringside commentating. Oh yeah. He's doing both jobs. Yeah. It, um, it's fun. It, it, it's fun because the, two shows ago was Derek told me, yeah, yeah. I, I said, who's the commentator because I need to know that for the announcing. Yeah. So I get to say, Oh, calling the action on behalf of our friends at Sorgatron media, you know, doc and church, the normal ring announcing team. Well, doc's no longer there. Church is no longer there. Doc may be back with, so, you know, I've had, had a couple of fill-ins. Okay, well, who's the show? Who, who's the commentary this month? Oh, I was hoping it would be you. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> Welcome to indie wrestling. That's right. So, <laughs> That's how it works, yep, basically. It, so okay. Yeah. Thankfully, I know the storylines, and thankfully, I know the, enough of the the wrestlers involved to mm-hmm. uh, you know to do what I can and fake the rest. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's mm-hmm. if it's two new guys I've never seen before and I have literally ten minutes to pre- prepare. Well, guess what? Now they're two names looking to make their mark in RWA and prove themselves to RWA <laughs> management. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> Problem solved. You don't need a story at that point, no, right? There's your story right there. Nope. Nope. So. Um, and I never actually catch the wrestlers in the back. It, it's always a mystery at RWA. We're, we, I feel very segregated. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, it's de- yeah, it's definitely a, uh, you know, there's some shows where uh, yeah, mostly the CWF and I do the commissioner bit, but right. it, you know, I spend most of my time backstage. I try really hard to watch the action because mm-hmm. I think that's, that's literally where the action is. Mm-hmm. And that way I could tell you know, whoever the promoter is, you know, what I thought of the matches because I'm not, I'm never, of course, going to be in the ring, of course. So I, but I know the presentation. I'm not going to say, oh, you did the hip toss wrong, but I can say at least, oh, well, you know, this guy didn't really play the crowd enough. This guy didn't, you know, he sort of did his own thing, sort of independent of what's happening. And, and, you know, he didn't do enough on this thing. And it's, it's the little things. It's not the tactical things, but it's sort of like the, the presentation, the show presentation, you know, and I think that's, that's a way I can be an asset to things. You know, this this angle didn't go as well as you, know, you thought. Well, here's why. Here's here's maybe what what you could do next time to sort of correct that. Awesome, awesome. So, all right. So, so to wrap this up, but we, we like yeah. to hit on a few uh, particular things here. Sure. Uh, so, the first of all, aside from it could be indies, or aside from the stuff that you're working, let's say. Right. Uh, what are you watching in pro wrestling these days? Like, what's got your attention? Um, I think, like a lot of people, NXT has my attention. Mm-hmm. Um, and like like I talked about on the uh, Mayhem show earlier, you know, I try to watch Raw as best I can. Um, you know, I love what's happening with the New Day. I think the New Day is the freshest gimmick in years, even even on the indie level. I mean, New Day, New Day is doing things I haven't even seen on the indies. And usually, mm-hmm. the indies is the proving ground for, you know, whether or not a gimmick gets over or not. And I think that those guys, the three of them, are, are as creative as anybody I've ever seen. And the fact that the the WWE noticed that and gave them the ball to run with it. But on the indies, I, mean, I, I catch I catch Ring of Honor when I can. I catch certain groups when I can. I just I, I try to get a feel for what's hot. I don't have the time in my personal schedule to go through and just comb things and watch entire shows. But if I see, if I hear a buzz about something, I'll, I'll hop on YouTube and I'll hop on the, the, the Federation sites to see if I can catch some video of it, just to be in the know and just say, Hey, this, this is a thing that could be happening maybe. Or another thing I will do, I'll watch, and, and, and this is kind of crazy, but this is who I am. And this is how I do homework. I'll watch a lot of indie matches for just the ring announcing. Hmm. Just to see what they, just to see what you know, somebody in, you know, Washington State does, or, or or Fed Out West, or something just different, just to see, oh, what's the hook, you know, what's the, what's the catch, what are they doing, how are they announcing the wrestlers? And I know announcing is announcing, you you can do so much with it, but if there's something that you know I like, then you know I'll I, maybe I'll incorporate in what I do. You know, the the one that's the one thing I've noticed when when I think about who I am as a ring announcer is I don't really have a hook. You know, Hank Hudson has the rock'em, sock'em, kick-butt wrestling, and other people have mm-hmm. little catchphrases. I don't really have that. Maybe it's the rules bit. I don't know. But um, <laughs> no, I, I, That's how you but, make your mark. Yeah, right. So that's that might be it, you know. But yeah, uh, yeah so man, I, I, I catch here and there. I don't catch as much as I used to catch just by virtue of my schedule and, mm-hmm. and life being what it is. But um, I, I try to catch enough just to stay in love with it. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so... What is the worst and best thing about working in independent wrestling in your time here? Best thing for me is the, uh, it's the, I'm going to say the improv, I guess improvisation might be the best word. I just love the, the fact that uh, by virtue of what it is, and I think it's, it extends to wrestling in general, it's, it's live, physical, theatrical performance you know if you go see if, if you go see to the Benham center i'm just throwing out names and and and, and maybe maybe it's disjointed but if you go to the Benham center to see you know shakespeare's romeo and juliet you know what you get every time you know you know how you know how things are going to go every time you know how the play goes you read the book you know how everything happens you go to an indie wrestling show 
you literally don't know what you, you're going to expect next three hours. Right. You, you have no idea where it's going to go. It's live. It's real. It's happening. It's, you know, if, if, if a mask goes wrong, that how they correct it, you know, there's going to be mistakes. There's going to be good things. There's going to be something you've never seen before. Mm-hmm. Pretty much guaranteed every time. And I think that's the beauty part I love. And to be a part of it, to be the one who presents it to the audience and steps back and say, hey, here are the wrestlers. You watch them do their magic. You know, I think that's that's where I get the biggest thrill for it. And even, you know, last month and, and next month, the rematch. But, uh, you know, seeing guys like Sanjay Dutton, Amazing Red, go in there and tear it up for 15, 20 minutes. Yes. And do what they do best. And they're two of the best in the world at it. And then the fact that, uh, oh, my God, I get to be a part of this, a small, minute part, announcing them, presenting them in the ring, going back into the commentary table and then calling the match. That that part is you get a twofer. My, that part is absolutely <laughs> mind blowing to me. And it's like it, the, the fan in me, you know, mm-hmm. I hate using the term Mark, but the fan in me thinks, oh, my God, I'm calling <laughs> the Sanjay, <laughs> uh, Sanjay Dutt Amazing Red match. Or, or if it's a name, you know, oh my God, the Honky Tonk Man is wrestling and I'm calling him match. <laughs> or heck, the Honky Tonk Man's been in my car. You know, like, <laughs> when, I, when I used to cut, take some of the names to him from the airport. Right. But, um, right. you know, that sort of thing is a thrill. The worst thing, I, I, it, it's so Pollyanna for me to say, but I can't really think of a worse thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, the travel's long sometimes if it's a, if it's a long show, if it's a West Virginia show. It, 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 or sometimes it's it's you know, West Virginia. I know people have a lot more travel than that, but um, I think probably the worst thing, and I've experienced this in some places. I'm not naming names, is when a promoter is clearly unprepared or does things maybe differently than I expect, or differently than than uh, what should logically be done. Mm-hmm. You know, I like to think at this point, 14 years in it, I have an idea how shows should be presented and show how shows should be um, presented not only to the audience, but also to the backstage as well, because it's it's a set of rules. I did a show last year, again, not naming names, but uh, it was so disjointed from start to finish that I got very frustrated. I mean, I, I did it and I soldiered on and did the best I could with it, but there was there was no run sheet, for example, where it shows oh, wow. what the mat, which shows who the matches are, how long they're supposed to be. Um, there was no run sheet at all because the, the promoter said, "quote unquote," well, that's for TV. <laughs> and I'm just, <laughs> and it was so frustrating to me <laughs> because people need to know what's going on. And I got, again, not naming names, but there was a veteran that everybody watching this will know who has 30 years in the business, and this guy's asking me what's going on. <laughs> when's my next spot brother you know like that and i'm like okay i gotta tell this guy what he's doing because the promoter's not doing his job mm-hmm. and, and i don't mind that i'll you know part of me says screw it i'll take control as best i can and that, do what that I makes can. me appreciate oh one the people i have had the fortune to work with oh right uh, guys, guys, guys like you know derek in RWA yeah. and, and, uh, and, and like you know and bill are so on point yeah BOW, are so on point with what they do, top down, button down, uh-huh. that it is a pleasure and honor to work for them. And, and even when those don't go great, it's still better than that. You know, I mean, right, everybody, right. I mean, you got to think about all the moving parts that go into a show. Of course. Like, I, I mean, we, we've had this conversation about, like, listen, you know, you don't like how Raw went and how Raw flowed. Right. Re- do you know how many people go into making oh, yeah. three hours happen exactly you know exactly. it's it, and it, i mean and it, 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 the same thing in an indie show yeah it's the promoter slash booker with the idea the organization having people in the back um i've heard stories recently about somebody uh not being ready for their match that was next and like yep. you know getting their gear on beforehand mm-hmm. right you know going through the curtain practically yep. you know i mean th- this is the kind of this is what happens and then you don't even see all that stuff oh, no. you, or you, you're like that was weird you don't even know half of what oh, probably it, happened exactly exactly you don't know if there's if there was a legitimate fight backstage which i've seen mm-hmm. uh if there if there mm-hmm. are if somebody's late for their queue right we did a show for cwf in the uh schooner center in manesson which is a three-floor building and the yep. floor the the met the the ring was on the first floor lower level and the dressing area was actually on the third level and i saw a wrestler his music hit 
He had half his gear on on the third floor. I've never seen a person move that fast in my life to get the, all the way downstairs, two flights of stairs, run, 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 and, and to be ready for it like nothing happened. It just, it, the things that go on backstage, you know, and I always say <laughs> that wrestling is sort of my, my atonement for not doing the high school play. You know, just because seeing that that energy and seeing that sort of theatrical energy, and it's a the, it's a theatrical experience I can relate to. Mm-hmm. I can't relate to being an actor in any sort of play with a pre-established story or anything like that. But I can I can relate to this live improvisational sort of you know yin and yang, the riff that goes on, just having fun with it and you know taking taking it as it comes. I think that's that for me. That's the beauty part of it. It's a wonderful ballet. It really is a ballet. Bert Legrand, it's thanks for joining us. I may have to ask you to be my co-host for the rest of the show since That's we lost Eamon to did. some internet things. So, oh, God. Uh, Those dreaded internet things. So you're on Twitter at Real OSBL for Real. old school Bert Legrand. Yes. Four followers and counting. What can people expect from your Twitter? I think by uh, for this one, I just, I, 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 I'm doing two. I'm doing one for my real person persona. And I'm doing one for uh, the wrestling. And the wrestling one, I think, is just going to be thoughts about wrestling. Mm-hmm. You know, really just, um, you know, trying to encourage as, as much conversation as, as, as much as you can do in 140 characters uh, about wrestling and just what, what's good about it, what we like about it. And, and try to keep the positivity. You know, I think you, you go on certain boards, you go on certain, um, you know, venues, there's a lot of negativity. There's a lot of sniping back and forth. And it doesn't, right. it doesn't do anybody any good. And and just keeping the positivity, and keeping things going, and being getting people excited about wrestling. And if if it if if one person sees my stuff and decides to go to a show, then I've done my job. To there get one go. person to get one person involved in, in what we're doing, and what what you and I and, and others like us hold so passionately, I think that's that's all I can ask for. There you go. Go check them out. And if you're in the Pittsburgh area, of course, RWA's Bloody Harvest yep. coming up, I believe, on the 10th of October. Two Saturdays from now. Two Saturdays from now. Anything else you can pop it up at? Uh, VOW. Uh, our next show is uh, this coming Sunday at the Ice Mine in Connellsville. That's going to be at, uh, I believe, 4 o'clock bell time. Did you do the Death, the death Match show? Uh, I did not do that one. I okay. Did not do the, uh, no, I did the uh, I did the show before that. It was logistical concerns with my real job. Right. Um, so it kind of makes it tough to do Sundays, but I, but right. I will be able to do this uh, this coming Sunday. So I'm looking very much forward to that. There you go. Go check out all that stuff. Fishersoutcastwrestling.com, rwalive.com. That's right. And you can also see them uh, by a match over at IndieWrestling.us. Individual yep. matches available, including that Sanjay Dutt versus Amazing Red uh, for $1.99. You can check that out. Uh, so uh, with that, let's go check out what happened last week in Sorgatron Media. And we'll be right back with more Indie Mayhem Show. That's why somebody found it in a Spanish mall's basement. No, I would not pull over for Mr. Needlenose, all right? Mr. Needlenose can suck it. I am not pulling over for a fictional blue cartoon hedgehog. But, but he's super fast. I don't care. Fans like it. I really enjoy, you know, painting my face, and I, uh, I started doing that as Inspire a lot. And um, when Ultimate Warrior died, as a kid, like hey, that's the colorful guy. Like obviously, you're gonna look at him and, and just. So I started painting my face once he died as like my tribute to him. The Fire Seven Inch Display Wi-Fi, a gigabyte. By the way, it's fifty dollars, and by the way, it comes in a six pack. Uh, if other people are looking to buy this and want to go on on a six pack, let me know. I think my Christmas shopping has been taken care of here. Who's a Dana Brooke fanatic out of you guys? Guilty. What? <laughs> what? She talks through her nose. Ohio Linux Fest it was originally uh, a group of Linux user groups or several Linux user groups in Ohio said, well, hey, why don't we get together and have a conference? So they all sort of converged on Columbus. Uh, at the uh, Ohio State campus. And we're back. Check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com. And not in there, but we do have new episodes of Sawtooth Willie uh, now on both YouTube and Facebook and dedicated pages. Go search for it, like, and then subscribe. It gets interesting. It looks kind of like a guy from the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Craigslist this week. It got weird, uh, as it usually does. So, uh, Eamon is um, in, uh, as many people seem to be on this podcast Tuesday, uh, in a uh, connection black hole right now. Hmm. So, Bert, 
Welcome to as its co-host to the Andy Man Show. We're there. Uh, but anyways, uh, we'll hang out here for a little bit. See, we'll talk some indie wrestling real quick for the rest of the show. Uh, but first, of course, this past weekend, uh, IWC's Aftershock was uh, down in White Oak, PA. Uh, again, one of the kind of in-between shows, but still tons and tons of fun. Um, it, 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 it's always amazing to me. Um, and, and these are the smaller shows, uh, a little, a little less for people. And I've seen other, other shows with, with, uh, kind of lower numbers of people and they just seem dead and weird to me. Right. Uh, but I think if anything, IWC's hardcore come out for these ones. Um, the sec- like for instance, the section, I don't know if was, you saw Bert last month, uh, yep. uh, uh, Jock Sampson, I know you're. Uh, familiar with oh, uh, yeah. landing, I love, land, I love Jock. landing on the first row of the crowd in IWC last month yep. at Cage Fury, um, and they were there. And uh, I think they they cut there. There's some pictures. There's some promos. I think they're going to be coming out with them involved with uh, Bearded for Your Pleasure as the tag team is in the, over there. Uh, but no, lots of fun. Another great match with uh, Ray, Ray Lynn and Britt Baker. Britt Baker's been on the show, of course, before. Um, but uh, again, it's like you know some women's wrestling, and these are newer girls, basically. Um, and and seeing that and seeing their reaction has been really cool. And uh, another match between Andrew Palace and uh, Alex Daniels from uh, AIW. Uh, but uh, Axe Daniels actually trained by Johnny Gargano, uh, who's popping up lately on NXT. Uh, other than that, we had, uh, uh, off the top of my head, <laughs> uh, some fun tag team action. And uh, I, I don't know. I think IWC is really um, on the in-ring, really kind of going on all cylinders. And with uh, making new names and everything, as guys like Dalton Castle kind of uh, move up to, to Ring of Honor, you're not going to see them anymore. You know, guys like Ray Rowe, this is something that happens all the time. Everybody, every, you know, we, we talk about, like, you know, kind of those goals, like, and not all feds are like this, but IWC definitely has that people pass through their doors and they get somewhere for the most part. I mean, you saw Super Indie. How many? Yeah. I, I pulled that up a little bit ago. The, the names under Super Indie 2 are yep. ridiculous. Corey Graves, Sterling James Keenan. Christopher Daniels. Christopher Daniels is part of that, right? Right. Yep. Uh, I think it was a Christopher Daniels versus Raven yes. in the first round I yeah, saw there. Yeah, that, that was the first round match. And yeah, I mean, just to, in general, I mean, not just Super Indie 2, what I did, but what, the, what they're able to do in terms of just being sort of the. Uh, not really a way stop, but just a chance for those guys to really hone their skills against some of the best in, in the Northeast region, let alone Pittsburgh. Uh, they're doing some phenomenal things in terms of in terms of where they're at, in terms of getting the wrestlers just in that right sweet spot between where they've been and where they're going, and mm-hmm. to get them really at the top of their game, but knowing that you know there's still so much more ground for them to cover. Well, you, even if you talk about IWC, um, it's. Reference when you look at the CM Punk DVD, right? Um, exactly that they were doing Cole Cabana, Cole Cabana and CM Punk all over the Northeast, and yep. they showed and they say we did it in Pittsburgh. Yes, that was did. IWC. They did it at. Yeah, I was there uh, for that. You, you were there for that <laughs> as a fan, as a fan, as a, as a fan. I was there, and, and just to see, it, it's funny because independent wrestling in general, let alone IWC, mm-hmm. you know, some of the people that I've personally worked with, you know, I mean, I had the running joke forever. I mean, when I managed Sterling James Keenan as a heel. Uh, against Claudio Castagnoli a couple times. Oh, jeez. I've, I've, I've managed that match three times. And one time we did the uh, the Rick Rude Warrior finish in WrestleMania five, <laughs> and, and and I could say that, you know, before, of course, the, his injury, you know, if, uh, if, Sterling, if uh, you know, Corey Graves ever needs help beating Cesaro, he knows where to call. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he knows I got his back. You never know. He could come back. Right, you never right. know. You right, never know. Exactly. You know, exactly. Maybe, you maybe, know. maybe uh, you can get his but, head fixed up. No, but just the point being is that, you know, again, you see the names come up. You know, yeah. people that just, you know, Beth, yeah. Beth Phoenix, she spent a lot of time in the, in, in the Pittsburgh area indie scene. That I didn't know. Oh, yeah, very much so. Um, you know, along with uh, the All Nighters and a couple other people. But mm-hmm. she, was, she was doing things like the, the uh, double Death Valley driver on two men mm-hmm. and just phenomenal things. It was just it really showing that. This person is somebody special, and, and and I can name others as well, and as well as the ones who've come through IWC, and uh, it's been you know it's it, it's fun to see those guys eventually make it to TV. Mm-hmm. You know Seth Rollins, you know back when he was pre Ring of Honor, Tyler Black mm-hmm. did some shows in FNW. It, you know, actually, I was watching. I think it was Superstar Inc. with Seth. Seth Rollins, so Corey, Corey Graves, serving James Keenan, Seth Rollins. Mm-hmm. And they did mention, he's like, yeah, we did such and such uh, working for your dad back in Pittsburgh. And yep. I'm like, I know what they're talking about. Yep. You know, up little in, things like in that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of the uh, Chikara guys as well. I mean, it's, you know, to see 
how that sort of thing evolves and how, again, where people have come from and where they've been, mm-hmm. where, where they're going. You know, is to, to watch that evolution, to watch those people who are truly a cut above level up. You know, it's one thing to be the weekend warrior and have a day, to, a day job here and then do a couple of shows on the weekend. But to see the people who are really passionate about, it, who are devoting their entire lives to honing their craft and touring the Northeast and touring the region and stopping in Pittsburgh every month, mm. whichever fed it, might, it may be, just to know that they're on their way up and know where they're going. It's a very exciting feeling. Who is the biggest, you saw them maybe at that early level, like maybe a, a, the CM Punk versus Cole Cabana, maybe time in their career. Mm-hmm. And you're like, this is definitely a guy I'm going to see on WWE. Uh, I, I thought so with Punk. I mean, Punk had a little bit of a reputation at the time in, in terms of the, you know, the the straight edge gimmick, the Pepsi tattoo mm-hmm. that you saw. This guy was different, and that was in we, I think I saw him in two thousand and three, which was two years before he signed with uh, OVW and, and, and WWF. But um, I mean, those guys and and you know, just seeing those guys, I knew Beth Phoenix would be somebody important because of just some of the things that she was physically able to do in the ring. I do. It was just, it was groundbreaking, not only for any wrestler, but somebody of, of, of that gender. Um, and, and just seeing those guys, I, I, I thought the world of, uh, of SJK too. And I knew he was going to be, be big because he was unique. He had a look and he, and he stayed humble. And I think that was, he had, a, he had a good attitude. And I think you know, obviously the support of his, uh, his family helped. And uh, being able to work with guys like Austin Aries and other people that I've, I've seen with Claudio and seeing those guys, and seeing that all come together, um, you know, you, you know, in a hurry, I think, who, who some of the big players are, just as you've seen with the IWC and other places. Certainly, certainly. Who do you see? I don't know. It, it, maybe this is a little too close. Yeah. But who do you see today on the Indies? Uh, you're in a couple of them. Right. You've worked in a few that you think is going to be like, I'm going to see the guy in NXT within five years um i think there are a couple guys floating around who i i mean i i definitely like a lot and i think that you know they're they're on the right path i think they have good attitudes um the guy i'm really big on locally here uh andrew palace mm-hmm. i think he is a great guy charismatic as hell great look great attitude can definitely be the the i mean entertaining as all hell in in, in real in, in in you know behind the scenes i was saying in real life but and I think that can definitely translate. It's not a forced gimmick. It's just he's very, very entertaining, very engaging, very, you know, I, th- I think he has a lot of the right tools to get there. I think that's somebody I can definitely see, you know, being a factor down the road. Certainly. Um, I, I can throw other names out there now, but I don't, I'd also don't want to leave anybody out either. There are a lot of very deserving people. Mm-hmm. I think um, uh, a guy like an RWA a lot is Ryan Rain. I, I think he's done some good things. You know, he's, he's, he's another young guy. Um, you know, a big fan of his, and I think again, I, I don't want to name out, name too many people because I don't, I don't want to leave out other people. I'm just not thinking of at this very moment, but I think there's some guys I see that you know really have it. Awesome. So let's get into around the Indies. Um, uh, our friend Matt Carlin has been putting together the last few weeks uh, regular uh, on the Indie Wrestling US blog. Uh, just a kind of a recap of what you missed over the weekend. The significant things to make sure you're not missing out on it. You kind of he's keeping me up with what's going on in the Indies, and then we kind of take a peek and uh, kind of have a little fun and uh, uh, see what's going on. And I love he's very multimedia with this as well. Uh, so first of all, beyond wrestling. Uh, this past weekend had a couple of shows in uh, in uh, Rhode Island, and of course, uh, Beth Busick got to crowd surf for his uh-huh. uh, Beyond Wrestling farewell. If you're on video, you can see our Instagram of that uh, <laughs> going on right there. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and also, love when pro wrestling is put into interesting venues like this. It yep. looks like there's a, this looks like some kind of concert weird venue. Yeah. Uh, with 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 the you know it looks kind of like Club Diesel a little bit with the way bit, the, yeah. the, the the balcony is or the altar everything. bar or something. Um, and Beyond Wrestling always has some very interesting things going on. Over I there. think a few months ago, go back to RWA. Mm-hmm. You know, they did the spot with uh, G Raver and. Mm-hmm. And uh, I forget which one of the uh, Forbidden Warriors it was, where G. River dove off the basketball hoop. Mm-hmm. And I, that again, you, you don't see those sort of things, and you know you're seeing something new for the first time. I'd never seen that personally. I'm sure it may have been done somewhere else, somewhere down the line, but uh, I'd never seen that personally. I thought it was one of those amazing 
things I'd ever seen. I'm so sad. Oh, wait, wait, was I there for that one? I don't remember. I think I, wait, was I there for that one? I or did I post edit it? No, I know I was there for that one, okay. I think. No, maybe I wasn't. <laughs> either way. The internal dilemma. Begins. Either way, I've missed all G. Rivers good moments in RWA because mm-hmm. I've, been, I've been double booked. Uh, but even like, I, I know I was post editing that one, I think, and, and that was just incredible. You've been just to see on that end. Yeah. Um, and, and, and the power of social media, you know, I, right. you, do the, you do the show and then you know, you go home and just you know decompress a little bit. And you look on your Facebook and boom, someone posted it. Right, right exactly. There. I think I posted so, it right away. Maybe, yeah. I know I was there yeah, for that. That's right. Yeah, because I'm like, he's not doing that. There you go. He's not doing it. I remember looking oh across God. and he's watching. Good. I'm like, that thing's coming down. Right. There's no this, way that thing's going to hold. Exactly. Because we've been like, we've debated on on putting banners up over the basketball hoop. <laughs> right. Because we're like, it's ugly and dirty. Let's let's do something with this. Yeah. Right. And then we're just like, I don't know if I'll hold a banner. I like, really? <laughs> I, you know. <laughs> and yeah. now he's climbing. He's a fully on grown this man. Thing? I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, he's not. He's not a huge cruiser weight, but still. Fully grown cruiserweight size, an band. adult nonetheless. <laughs> uh, beyond that, and then like stuff like this, and I think there needs to be more of this. Uh, you know, some spots with uh, Ricochet, uh, a six thirty from him in uh, Beyond Wrestling. This will repeat in a moment here. Just ridiculous stuff. But this is the kind of thing that gets that out there. We talked about mm-hmm. with the table spot with the ladies from Inspire Pro Wrestling a few weeks ago. Yep. I mean, that's the thing that gets you into it, um, and hopefully by the DVD and and everything. So apparently, uh, unfortunately, uh, also. Um, there was a uh, ugh, here's some this, this will be rough so make sure you're not eating when you see this a uh, bit of an ankle injury with Pinky Sanchez oof, who we oof, saw yeah. riding a bicycle with uh, uh, whatever Jersey Championship Wrestling is being called these days mm-hmm. uh, so yeah I'm hoping it's not serious he yeah. says that looks kind of rough yeah. um, uh, Shakara had some uh, crazy stuff going on uh, we had uh, uh, Shinron climbing up in the rafters a little bit. Uh, we've seen a, a facade do this, especially in, in Clearfield, a little bit, where mm-hmm. he would, uh, yeah, he would he kind of shimmy the the rafters and do something crazy. Although he's doing this on the outside of the ring and doing a flip. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Um, you, you can tell who's the gymnast that come into pro wrestling, mm-hmm. right? Yep, exactly. And you can tell it's it's it takes all kinds. Uh, that's one thing I've noticed. It takes all kinds. You know, mm-hmm. the, the different sizes. The different specialties, different uh, you know backgrounds, martial arts, mixed martial arts, uh, gymnastics, you know football, amateur wrestling, mm-hmm. it all comes together. Really, the, the the indies are a great melting pot for that. And in the things I I never expected to pop up on our indie wrestling blog, uh, the presidential hopeful Bernie Sanders apparently showed <laughs> up at a uh, 3X uh, wrestling event in Iowa, I guess. Uh, yeah, there he is, mm-hmm. uh, hanging out, and there's this, wrestling. Yep. <laughs> That happened. Yeah, that happened. Uh, so apparently this is uh, during Iowa Latino Festival in Des Moines. Uh, and yeah, Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders, who's camp- who was campaigning at the festival, showed sure. up during the matches Friday afternoon. There are uh, also pictures of him just hanging out in the crowd. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Is he a fan? What the case is? He's hanging out with one yeah. of the pro wrestlers afterwards. <laughs> that's some great stuff. Oh, that's so that's awesome. A moment. That was a great moment. It would be like, I don't know, even if he does or doesn't make it as a presidential. Right. I, I don't think he has a chance. I'm right. not sure. This isn't a political show. No. Not unless it's backstage. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's for the real politics. Yeah, though. the real politics. But uh, but it was still a really cool yeah. moment. A really cool moment for that. Um, and of course, uh, the, from the weekend, uh, the news about uh, uh, Matt Jackson having to go fly solo, at least at the Ring of Honor show, since uh, his brother, uh, his, his wife was uh, uh, giving birth a little bit early. So uh, I know he, he ran solo at the Ring of Honor. <laughs> There's a tweet here I miss Nick. Uh, he still <laughs> promised a uh, Super Bowl, or, I'm sorry, a Super Kick party at Ring of Honor and still had everything else going on. Um, other than that, oh, by the way, this lineup, uh, Destiny Wrestling, Destiny World Wrestling has a triple threat main event lined up with Ricochet, who we just saw doing a 630, um, against Rey Mysterio wow. and PJ Black, the former Justin Gabriel. Justin Gabriel, that's wow. right. Incredible. And that's actually coming up on August 3rd. And all the rest of the pro wrestling information fit to print at indiewrestling.us slash blog. And uh, check out that. Subscribe to it and follow Mainstream Matt1T 
on the Twitter as well because uh, he's definitely talking a lot about the Indies and really getting into this and doing some great articles on WrestlingMayhemShow.com as well. Uh, again, talking to that fan that jumped into a uh, Night of Champions ring uh, during the the Wyatts versus the uh, Shield remnants uh, during that and event. Hopefully that's going to be a watershed moment for people to just stop that. <laughs> You would think so, but unfortunately, uh, this guy is not doing any favors for himself and others. Right. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think it's just it, it's a very unf- yeah, it's it, it's a prevalent thing recently with all, especially mm-hmm. with all the guy, the the shield members, people who are just interfering. I know the few times that's, that's happened, you know, when I've been involved in terms of the indies, you know, that's that's free reign for the wrestlers to do their thing, because that's a very dangerous. I mean, it's a dangerous spot for everybody involved. It's a stupid mm-hmm. spot for everybody mm-hmm. involved. And because there's that great unknown factor, you literally don't know what that person's intentions are when they come to that ring. And it's always the, the you know, with indie wrestling, I'm surprised that doesn't happen more. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, especially shows that don't have guardrails right. or maybe not really that great a security. That's no. really security. No, yes, the, the shirts, the, the shirts belie their ability. Uh, <laughs> I think it's it's. It, I'm surprised too, especially in. Uh, in some of the lesser venues and some of the lower venues. I mean, hey, we were, we were, you were there. I, I talk about all the time, the time with the Ryan Edmonds, who really got a lot of people's goat over oh, the yeah. years, especially right. the, uh, I want to call it the domestic abuse angle. I thought it was going down a couple of times there. Oh, and, yeah, exactly. And and that's, that's Ryan Edmonds doing his job. And, and, and some of the RW fans, God bless them, really, really get into the show. And, mm-hmm. and it adds to the spectacle. And I, I, I thank God that nothing's happened where nobody's actually crossed the line. Um, because I've said, I've seen it before in other federations and it's, it can be a very ugly thing, uh, just an ugly thing all the way around and very unfortunate, but, um, you know, hopefully I know there's intention for, for the people in WWE to be you know, prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law where before it was just an ejection and a quote unquote lifetime ban. But I, I think hopefully that's what's happening recently is sort of a, a, a watershed moment. I mean, we all remember the, uh, Eddie Guerrero ladder match. With RVD, when when the fan directly interfered with uh, you know Eddie's ladder spot, which could be very dangerous. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. in terms of a fans climbing the cage or Halloween right. Havoc, you right? Know? Exactly, I mean, and just getting kicked in the face by Hulk Hogan and Macho Man. <laughs> yeah, see, that's what should happen. <laughs> right, but, uh, right. Mm-hmm. It helps when you're you're supposed to supposedly thugs in the band. It was more Wild West back then, right? Well, exactly. we're a publicly traded company, so you know. Yes, we um, <laughs> the RWA <laughs> is not a publicly no, traded company. Not. Look out. Yeah. Watch your ass. Fair game. <laughs> exactly. Bert, it's been so great. Thank you for hanging uh, out here you, and Sword. being my surprise co-host for the last part of the show. <laughs> uh, and all night with the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, Bert's got some great insights over on that. Uh, episode 489. And, uh, and and check them out. RWA, VOW. Yep. Lots of great stuff. Real uh, OSBL on the Twitters. Uh, go Facebook page coming soon. Facebook page. Go follow them. Ask him his thoughts on our wrestling in general. I hope yep. you got some insight out tonight. <laughs> so, and of course, check out everything wrestlingmamshow.com. Subscribe to the show, subscribe to our social medias, and uh, please comment, share, do all the like, and let us know what you think. 412 206 WMS0 are good times at wrestlingmamshow.com. <clears throat> Aim's at Aim and 2, please, and we'll find out if he ever has the internet again uh, sooner or later. I'm at Sorgatron, and uh, until next time, please support indie wrestling. For the taste of the poor huh? Sing, sing, sing You know how I act now If you got a problem Come and see if I'm a back down Act wild Steady sipping check Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at SorgatronMedia.com Hi everyone Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com. <laughs>